top 10 trending comics. How about we just chat about the secret to collecting comic books well? Let's get into it. Another week, another list, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. It's been a while since I've done that line. Heard that in a while. We have an LCS owner. We have Fire Guy Ryan here. And the secret to collecting comics well, bear with me, is knowing your comic books. You have to know your minor keys. And this list is filled with books that need to be added to your hunt list. You need to know covers. Without going too far into it, Keep in mind that a lot of these books we have talked about before in the past, and these are the type of things that as you go hunting in your comic book collections, at your stores, at garage sales this time of year, you should be looking for these books. Do us a solid. You're here already. You're watching the video. Just go hit the thumbs up. Hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. We do this every week. We've been doing it for just about six years at this point, too. We always cover the hottest, most trending comics every single week. And right here at number 10, Mad Max, Fury Road. Furiosa number one from 2015. This came out back when the original Fury Road movie came out, and now we are seeing the sequel come out just next week. This book's hitting $15 average sales. CGC 9.8 just sold for $81. This is the first appearance of Furiosa because it was a prequel to the first movie, and the next movie coming out this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, is Mad Max Furiosa, led by Anya Taylor-Joy. We're seeing an increase of copies sold of 267% on a book that was only printed to just above 20,000. So there's only 59 copies at a 9.8, and that's an increase of 18 copies in the last five months. But this is one of those books that you're probably going to have a better chance finding raw. Sure, just shy of 21,000 copies made for the first print, and with that low of a first print... They made a second print, which to me is shocking, but there were only 5,725 of that ordered by retailers, so that's going to be even tougher to find. One of those books that Raw is going to be your best bet. You got to know this cover. It came out in 2015. That's almost 10 years. This book is out there. Meanwhile, this whole comic series consists of four issues. The confusing part, however, three of them are number ones. Right? There's Mad Max Fury Road, <laughs> Nux, and Immortan Joe, number one. You've got Mad Max Fury Road, Furiosa, number one, the book we're talking about here. And then you've also got Mad Max Fury Road, Max, number one, and number two. So don't get confused, but if you can get all four of them, that might not be a bad idea. There is also a trade paperback collection if you are just a Mad Max nerd and you want to read them. I'm so hyped about this movie. I'm definitely going to see it. I've seen Mad Max Fury Road at least 10 plus times. We watched that movie together. It's kind of an anytime movie for me. And Chris Helmsworth, who's going to be portraying Dr. Dementis, the antagonist of this film, who's going to go up against the warlord Joe that you know from the prior movie, he's getting the Colin Farrell treatment. He looks unrecognizable. Yeah, he's got a lot of prosthetics on, but that sounds like Chris Hemsworth. That voice sticks out. But moving on, we got to get going because uh, the theme of this week's video, as uh, the theme of the last few weeks' videos have been X-Men. X-Men 97 hype is real. The season finale was just a few days ago, and we've got X-Men Adventures number one here at number nine on the list. This is seeing $18 average sales, and we just saw a 9.8 hit $200 earlier this week. First appearance of Morph! But it's also the first appearance of the animated series in a comic book. And I love this comic and I love this show. And I hope we get a Family Guy Simpsons treatment long term. I never want this animation to stop. This needs to happen every single week. Where are you going with this Family Guy Simpsons thing? But OK, that made sense. First appearance of Morph, by the way, I think that's that's worth a little extra oomph because Morph really kind of blew me away over the course of this season. Wish we got a little more and more from the finale, though. A 233% increase in copies sold this week, and we are reporting nine more 9.8 since the last time we reported on this book just a month ago. 301 total at 9.8. Last time it was number one in the list. Now it's number nine. This is the first X-Men book of probably many on this list. I can't remember the last time I watched a show's intro with every single episode viewing. I want to know if you did that in the comment section below while we move on to number eight. And officially, we have to provide a warning. But watch this first. Congratulations, Jeff. We got your information because you signed up to our SMS group so we can contact you to let you know that you won this week's giveaway. And if you want to be like Jeff, who just won a slab this week, all you have to do is go to comictom 101 Dot store. There should be a pop-up when you go to the website. If it doesn't happen, there is a bubble right there that says 10% off. You also get 10% off for joining. And all you have to do is put your phone number in, and that way you can be part of every giveaway we do. And we do them weekly. And if you want to be part of this week's giveaway, which is an X-Men Adventures number one, all you have to do is go to the website, join up, and geek responsibly. Let's get back to the video. 
And again, we touched on this last week, but here again this week, there's some spoilers for X-Men 97. And I know you guys are here. You really just want to see me, obviously. But if you're here to listen to some comic book talk, X-Men 97, maybe go pause, uh, boot up Disney+, Plus, get caught up on that show, and then come back here. Number eight on the list is X-Facta, number 24. First cover appearance of Archangel, second full appearance. He appears in issue 23. No one knows about it. And that is a $5 book. Add it to your hunt list. Add all these books to your hunt list. You're going to find them for so cheap. $40 averages on this comic book. And $230 for a 9.8, which seems super low. I think this book should have creeped up over the last six years that we've been reporting these lists. An increase of copies sold of 118% because of speculation. So if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that both Tom and I have been pushing the 2324 way before we started pushing 180 versus 181. Everyone talking about Archangel having the cameo before he actually shows up. But Angel is the horseman death. So much speculation about someone who may be leading all of the horsemen. And this is one of those books that it is perpetually relevant and ridiculously cheap. For such a key book that this has been for so long, the fact that it's still selling for $40 average sales, it just seems criminally low. Without getting into too much detail, Four Horsemen is going to be a likely path forward that we're going to see in Season 2. We'll get into more specifics next, but this right here is a pure spec play according to what I saw at the end of X-Men 97 Season 1. More X-Men 97 spec here. We have number seven, The Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, number one from 1994. This is a four-issue miniseries, and we are seeing the first issue going for $3 average sales and a high 9.8 for only $71. It's a minor key. It's an origin of Cable. But there are only 46 slabs on the census. 26 of them are 9.8s. This is a book that if you know it in dollar bins, you're going to find it probably as well in quarter bins. So again, this book is on the list because of what happened in the finale of X-Men 97, where we got a brief glimpse of Apocalypse and Sabanur, as he was known back in the ancient Egypt days. And this is on here because we're, we've are we got people looking forward to what may happen in season two when we get to spend more time, presumably, in this time period with these characters. And in this comic book, you get Cyclops and Phoenix kind of heading back in time to, you know, do some shenanigans and we get some cable stuff thrown into the mix. All of this feels like it might work very well in season two of the show, and especially for somebody like me who definitely needs to brush up on my apocalypse stuff, this book is definitely one to hunt down. Season two spec is driving this to a 1,075% increase in copies sold this week. And since it's the origin of cable, I'm going to do my duty as a local comic shop owner and let you know, Hope Summers, Cable's adopted daughter, has never had an origin story told before this very week. Go and pick up X-Men Forever number four and they explain what happens. It's crazy that more people are not talking about this book right now. Which brings us to number six. Hot damn. Join the mystery mail. I'll call one per box this month. Announced this week. Deadpool Wolverine World War Three cover art done by Ivan Tao. Wolverine's adamantium claws going through Deadpool and Deadpool's sword going through Logan. This is a must-have. Join the community and support what we do by going to ComicTom101.com. Number six on the list is Rise of Apocalypse. Number one. This book dropped in 1996, and right now we're seeing $8 average sales, but a 9.6 just sold earlier this week for $65. And in this issue, we've got the origin of Apocalypse and the introduction of Akaba, which is like his the place he was born. And I'm pretty sure that's the location that we got time-traveled to at the end of X-Men 97 Season 1. They give you a hint of what I think has to be Kang's Fortress, which is... Rama Tut's Fortress. It makes sense if we're going back to Egyptian times. We already told you that we're going to different timelines in season two, and it's all going to be based around Apocalypse, who was absent conveniently in the first season, or rather this latest season of the animation X-Men 97, and clearly being set up for season two. Thus, this book, Be Spike, and an increase of copies sold of 1,250% do I think you should pay $65 for a 9.8? I mean, if you send in one book and get paid $10 for it, you're getting awfully close to that being the value of the book. It does make sense if you are wanting to get ahead of the curve, but I think this is another example of one that you just need to know the cover and be savvy on the hunt. Track it down yourself. There's 106 slabs in total on the CTC census and 9.8s. We're seeing 52. That's about half. So if you're asking me, just track it down yourself and, and have some fun hunting it down. Read it first. 
and send it in. This is a warning we have given multiple times on the mic. We want to make sure everybody knows it. When there is a low census count, not because of a scarcity problem, because of a no one was specking on it problem, they just haven't been graded. What we tend to see is an influx of census count in the short term and people paying too much money right out the gate. This is one I think you should wait on because people are going to find it and they're going to get them graded and they're going to see this census count explode. And it falls to me another X factor major key. Number five on the list, X factor number six, going from his origin story to his first cover and first full appearance. We have Apocalypse, $65 average sales and a high 9.8 for only Four hundred and forty three dollars. Considering how high this book was, we were seeing sales over a thousand dollars back in June of twenty twenty two and consistently in the seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred and fifty dollar range in that time. This book is drastically down. You always got to give a shout out to issue number five of this run because you have the four horsemen going up against X Factor on a white cover that is really tough and high grade, especially when you compare it to issue number six and no one gives it love. That's a book you can find for five to 10 bucks. Sometimes people don't even know about it. And last page reveal, you have at least four panels that feature Apocalypse in it. He's kind of in the shadows, but he has multiple word bubbles. And considering how long he talks, he puts the amount of dialogue when you compare it to Hulk 180, Logan, to shame. And this right here is definitely the biggest X-Men related key on this week's list. And if you haven't noticed, most of the books on this week's list are X-Men related. But again, as somebody who is not super familiar with Apocalypse, my main experience with this character comes from when he's on the team in Krakoa in the in the Jonathan Hickman era. So I really need to go back and read some old X-Factor stuff and learn. I got to learn. And if it looks like the community is agreeing with me because we're seeing all sorts of Apocalypse stuff make the list this week. Well, we're seeing different eras of Apocalypse, the far future, age of Apocalypse, dystopian future, the present time that we get to witness in X-Men 97, but we also have characters that go back in time to Egyptian times, and that's when you see in reason to spec on the origin of Apocalypse because you have a young Apocalypse who hasn't received the technology that he would get from Pharaoh Rama Tut, and it looks like that's where this is all headed because we see some advanced technology, at least in the dome that is on the plains of the Egyptian floor. Floor, sand, marble tile. I don't even know what they were walking on at Egyptian times, but... Carpet? I don't know. Possibly. Shag, shag carpet. But this next one on the list, number four on the list, we have X-Men 185. Again, one of those books that nobody was specking on. Well, here's the proof. There's only five copies listed on the census and four of which are 9.8. This book is hitting $15 average sales, $30 for a high raw sale because they have no CGC number to report on. And... This right here is a recipe for people to overpay on a slab because there's going to be a flood of these that hit the market. And the first ones that hit are some of the very few copies in existence for now. And they're probably going to be listed for way more money than they're going to end up going for because you can find this book in dollar bins. No one knew that Gambit has submitted himself to Apocalypse before to become a herald, a horseman of death. And that's also the reason why we put Archangel, the other death horseman, higher up on our list because that spec seems more risky compared to this one. Yeah, unless I really missed something, I don't remember seeing Angel anywhere in this first season of X-Men 97. So having that Archangel plotline come almost out of nowhere in season two might be a little tougher, but I could easily see them, you know, zombie resurrecting some sort of gambit, you know, the horseman of apocalypse situation. And that would be traumatizing for us as uh, viewers and uh, traumatizing for everybody on the screen. I think it would be Really, really dark and super cool to see. Come on, dude. I mean, big spoiler warning here, but at the end of the credits, you totally see Apocalypse holding a playing card. I don't know how much more you can telegraph this. I already forgot about that. It means I guess I guess I got to rewatch the whole season already, and I'm probably going to very soon. Which brings us to number three on the list with OG, Jenny Frizen, Tim Seeley. We have Revival number one from 2012. This book's hitting $15 average sales. Nine eights going for $66. This book has been hovering around the $40 to $60 range for quite a long time because of option rumors. Well, this week we found out that it's actually headed to sci-fi, which... I don't think people should poo-poo. At this point, we've had more Netflix fails as it pertains to how they affect collectible comics than sci-fi. Resident Alien is getting great reviews and has landed on the trending list because of sci-fi bringing it to a live-action adaptation. And then you also have Battlestar Galactica. Enough said.
That's true. If you're like Tom and you ignored me for years and never watched Battlestar Galactica, go correct that mistake right now. That's one of the one of the greats. That's an all time classic. Revival seems pretty cool to me based on the plot. It's about a small town in Wisconsin that gets a whole bunch of dead people sort of mysteriously revived and they're now living amongst us. And I guess that would really kind of mess with a, a town and a whole bunch of group of people. It'll make a pretty cool show. And that explains why we are seeing an 800 percent increase in copies sold. However, it's still really early in the process. Yes, this is going to happen on sci fi. Hopefully, but we don't have any uh, writers attached. We don't have a showrunner or, or uh, stars attached at all yet. So it could not happen. That's a little a little moment of caution there. But I think it would be pretty cool. And just to show a little bit more sci-fi love, you guys remember that Dune television show? Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. That Dune show is one of my favorite Dune things ever. It's done so well. And even though it's cheesy and the special effects were really crappy because it was like late 90s, early 2000s sci-fi, 100% must watch. And Tim Seeley, the writer of Revival, is also co-writing a book with a good friend of the show, Tony Fleece. And I think everyone's focused on the success of Stray Dogs and Feral, but they're not picking up Local Man. Just got nominated for an Eisner, too. It's very good. And yeah, not enough people are talking about it. It's my personal favorite Tony Fleece book as well. So give that a shot. Which brings us to number two on the list with a book that people are clearly overspending on. It doesn't make sense to me. Let's get to it. X-Men. 97 number one. This book just came out. This is the prequel to the X-Men 97 show, but it's not the first appearance of the X-Men animation style team. And this book is hitting $15 average sales, which isn't preposterous to me. That makes sense. A lot of hype on this show. May settle at 10, maybe a $20 book one day. Who knows? But someone paid $80 for a 9.8, which seems a little high, but again, hype is real. Is this right? Butch? Someone paid $170 for a 9.8. You could have gotten X-Men Adventures 1, the first printing, from nearly 30 years ago for that price. Yes, that's the crazy thing about this. We saw one on bids and one on buy it now the exact same day, and the one on bids was twice as expensive. So part of this is... All of you sellers, make sure you know what the market is. Sometimes the market will bear a little bit more than the last previous sales. But at the same time, buyers, don't go crazy and bid on something that you could buy it now for $80. A little bit of a caveat for both of you. Now, if you're like me and you like to completely ignore Ryan, I'll ask you, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the show. And Butch, hit, the, hit the thumbs down button for that one. Look at this. <laughs> Butch has his head on the microphone. He's just using it to like rub himself. So like the video for Comic Butch. And let's talk about the number one most trending book of the week because it's a key and it's a Spider-Man book. And it's been a while since that's happened. Everything's been about mutants lately. Everything's been about like indie stuff. And now we have Spider-Man Noir spiking because of Nicolas Cage. That's what they call burying the lead. Spider-Man Noir number one came out in 2009. We're seeing $180 average sales and a 9.8 just hit $470 just a couple days ago. And all in all, we're seeing a 640% increase on this book because, like Tom ruined a little bit ago, Nicolas Cage, it was just announced this week that he is going to do this role in live action. Uh, for the Spider-Man noir show that is coming to Amazon. He did the voice for this character in Into the Spider-Verse. And I think he was in a, a little bit in Across the Spider-Verse there at the very end. But either way, he's coming to live action. Spider-Man set during the Great Depression. Nicolas Cage is going to be a private eye down in his luck, but also being considered the only superhero in America. This is going to be fantastic. And it also brings us the first Nicolas Cage-led television show. Is that correct? It's so apparently this is his first time ever doing a role on, on TV, at least in a long-form series like this. And I also saw that this show is just going to be called Noir. I'm not sure that that sounds like a great idea. They're dropping the Spider-Man title from this, apparently, so we'll see. We've had rumors about a Nicolas Cage-led show since 2023, but considering that Amazon just canceled the Silk show that was supposed to be coming out, we really don't have a whole lot of faith until we've actually seen something released. But this book was recently on the trending two months ago, and we've seen 31 more books on the CGC census, including 14 more 9.8s. So people are pulling them out. Also, the fact that the record high of $750 back in 2019, we're at just over half of that. So this is a good time for a good book. It's not an easy book to acquire in high grade. What comics are you collecting in the comment section below? Also, I encourage everybody to really know these covers because so many of them you can find on the hunt for cheaper than what they're going for at their heights. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said.